Today, I'm going to show you exactly how to use the hash set in Java. I hope you're having a great day. If you're new here, my name is Alex. I make a new Java tutorial just like this one every single week. So if you're new here, then please consider subscribing. First thing we'll do to start uh, learning about hash set in Java is just go to file new Java projects. Call it something like hashes. Hit finish. Inside of that project we just created, right click on source and go to new clash. We'll call it something that isn't hash set because that might cause some problems. So I'll just call it like hash browns. And I'll hit the first check mark and then hit finish. Now we're all set up to start learning. So the word hash set might sound pretty confusing. And it's like hash map, array list, hash set. What are all these different things? These are all names that we give to classes that help us store lots of data in one convenient place. And it's the same thing for arrays. If we have a simple integer array here, like this, we can store like say three different numbers in here. And to access them, we can just do a of one like that. That would get us this number five here. So if I just run this, This array is a simple way to store different values. The hash set is no different. It's a single place to store a lot of different values and we can just access it a little differently. So to start practicing with this hash set, we have to make one. And so to do that, you just type hash set h, or name it whatever you want, equals new hash set, with a capital H and a capital S for set there put some uh, opening and close parentheses and finish it off with a semicolon. And this just sets it up for us and then we can use our hash set, it's called H. But now, I'm just gonna hover over it because it looks like we've got some red underlines here and no program likes red underlines. So I'm just gonna click this import hash set java.util. What that does is it generates this import statement at the top. And this is just telling Java that we want to bring in that hash set code into this program that we just made. So now the red underlines are gone and now we've got some yellow underlines. And if we hover over that and see what it's complaining about, it's just saying that hash set is a raw type. We should say what types of data are gonna be in the hash set because it might be confusing for the computer. For this example, we'll start off with strings, and then I'll do another example afterwards. So just type string inside of these little alligators here. Now it's a little easier for the computer. To add data into our hash set, just like we would add data to a hash map or an array, for our hash set, we type h dot, and then this dot brings up everything that the hash set can do. And we want to add some data, and looks like there's one called add here, so I'm just gonna type add, or you could click it, and replace whatever value was in here with the string we wanna add to it. So I'm just gonna say like lemur. Say we're storing a bunch of strings that are types of monkeys, or of the primate genus. Not sure of the correct terms, but we're just gonna add our little monkey-like friends here. So. Maybe we have an orangutan, orangutan as well. And maybe after that we have a, a spider monkey. Now our hash set H has some string data in it. The name hash set is confusing. It's still confusing to me. So just like, don't worry about that too much. I'm gonna show you how to use it. I'm gonna zoom out here a little. If we print out H, Print out H like this. Uh, I just got a new computer, a new MacBook, and the arrow keys are different sizes, so I'm not used to that. I'm just gonna save it and run it. And here we've got our lemur, orangutan, I butchered the spelling there probably, and spider monkey. We can add another one if we want. It doesn't have to be only three. Silverback. Gorilla, R.I.P. Harambe. Save it and run it and you'll see that that gorilla is now added. So that's essentially what this hash set is. It's just this set of 
data you give it. And adding is not the only thing we can do. We can also remove from it. So we can say remove um, the orangutan. Save it and run it. And now you'll see just the three are in there. You can also remove everything by doing h.clear. And that will take all the values inside of it and remove them all. So now it's empty. And anything you do h dot to, you can just kind of look and mess with. So here we've got h dot size. I can just print that out. Now you see it's size four and they're all there. That's because I deleted that clear statement from earlier. You can also see if it contains a certain value. Um, just as before, we just type the name of our hash set dot contains. And then what do we want to see if it contains? We want to see if it contains the spider monkey. Spider monkey. Save and run it. And true. It'll return true if the spider monkey is in there. And it will return false if the spider monkey is not in there. So we can see if it contains Zabumafu. And since it doesn't, it'll have false. That's useful for if statements. You could say if the hash set contains a certain value, then do this. But if it doesn't have it, then let's do something else. I'll do another example right now, but uh, first we'll do this last one. It's called is empty. And you can see if the hash set is empty, it'll return true if it's empty and false if it's not empty. So let's make another hash set together. And I'll show you this cool little trick that we can do to iterate through the hash set using the iterator. So remember how to use a hash set? The first thing we do, well, we know that we can just type hash set to start it off. Hash set, I can name it like hash browns because that's hilarious. And set that equal to a new hash set object that's empty and ready to be used. There's no red underlines because we already have this import java.util hash set at the top. All we did there was we hovered over it and clicked import java.util.hash set. And that generated this code up here. Now we've got the yellow underlines. We just got to say what type. Let's do integers this time. So we'll have a hash set full of integers. And the reason that we're doing a capital integer instead of like int like that is because we want it to pass the like object integer instead of like the primitive type integer because it won't work that way. So now let's start adding to our hash browns. Hash browns dot add. And we'll add our integer here, say like 13. Add a few more here. Say add 24. 24, I think, I think 24 is my favorite number. It's one of them, it's up there because it's divisible by so many other numbers. And five. Hosh browns, hash browns. And like before, we can remove and add and clear just like we did before. So we could clear it and you get the idea. Hash browns. And now they're all gone. If we don't clear it, then they're all there. What I'm gonna show you right now is how we can loop through them using the iterator. Before I started that, there are actually other ways you can do this to get the values out of a hash set. You could do hash browns dot to array like that and that'll turn it into an array. It prints out this gibberish because it's like where it, the array is in memory. So what we can do is just say um, an int array h equals hash browns dot to array and then print out say like h of zero and it wants it to be type object instead of integer. So if we save and run that, then we get our five. Notice how it's getting five and not 13. That's because you can't rely on the position, the order of you adding as the order that it comes back. It's sort of hashed all over the place. It's like a hashed set. So that's why it's called hash set. Do h of one and we'll get 24. 
You can also get the hash code of a hash set. I'll explain what that is in a second. Hash code, save it and run it. And you get just this random number. That's kind of like the algorithm it uses to disperse all the values you put into it. I think, I'm like 90% sure. But let's get onto that iterator. I'm talking way too much. To start getting values from a hash set, we can just type capital iterator, call it like it equals hash browns dot iterator. There's a red underline because we need to import that and import the iterator java dot util one. And now it's up there. Just like before, this has yellow underlines because it wants to know the type. So we'll just put in our alligators. This is gonna be integer. Now to use the iterator, we put it in a while loop and we say it dot has next. What this says so far is that, hey, I hear you've got this hash browns hash set. And one of the things you can do with that hash set is iterate through it. It can return this iterator object. So let's just create one of those called it. And let's try to use it. You can use it by typing the name of the iterator dot has next. And if the set has a next value, then it'll keep going. And what do we wanna do? Well, let's just print out the next value. Okay, save it, and I'll just delete that print statement at the end, save it, and run it. Now we get each value 5, 24, and 13. So I hope that this helped you learn about hash sets in Java, and if it did, then you can stick around on the channel. I've got plenty of other tutorials just like this one. Might be able to help you out as well. Got a lot of plans for this channel, so if you're new here, consider sticking around, and I'll see you later. Have a great day.